Greetings, greetings to each and every one of you from every corner of the globe. We welcome you to our 10th Day of the Ancestors Festival of Masks at the Merck Park Art Walk, the virtual edition. Uh, this is a special year in many ways, not least of which is that we are joined by people from around the globe watching from their living rooms, bedrooms, backyards, wherever you have a screen and some speakers and, and some loved ones near or far. I'm broadcasting live from my garage here in Watts, and it's just as hot in here as it is in the sun out in front of the Vision Theater in the Merck Park right now, and our team is spread all over the world. So we want to hear from you. So please type into the chat what part of the world you are tuning in from. That goes for our home team as well. Hey, Tasha, where are you at? Tasha coming here live from the LBC, Long Beach. Yeah, see, we're everywhere. We're all over LA, all over the world. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, please enter it in the comments where you are. And for those in the, in the Zoom audience, click on the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. Also, while you're down there, please turn off your cameras and click the little arrow to access the video settings. You want to check the setting that hides non-video participants. That's why you get, the, you get the main view the whole time. And use this link right here in the chat for captioning if you need it right there. Let's see where we're coming in from. We got we got Highland Park in here, Southern California, Pasadena, Chatsworth, California, Riverside, where all my family's at. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I Arizona. Saw Brooklyn. There's Brooklyn in the house. Inglewood. Austin, Texas. Ah, New York, New York. Yeah. Chicago. South Toronto. Central. Oh, we got somebody from Jersey came to South Central. Fantastic. Okay. Who else we got here? We got Toronto. Mm -hmm. San Pedro, San Diego. Oh, oh, we got Lagos, Nigeria over here. Nice. Norwalk, California, Austin, Texas, the Bay Area, Brooklyn. We got Marina Del Rey. Chicago. Oh, we're coming from all over the place, y'all. Johannesburg, South Africa. There we go. Yes. Stretching across the globe, around the world, y'all. We also want to give a big shout out to DJ Ade for always holding us down. Uh, hey, Tasha, can you tell us a bit about today? Yes, yes. Thank you all, and thank you, Bruce. So today, we're celebrating Black joy, a source of resistance and resilience despite the challenging circumstances experienced by us Black folks everywhere. We're so excited to have talent from all over the world coming directly to your screen. World famous drummers, dancers, singers, poets, and so many more are coming together to celebrate this Day of the Ancestor Festival of Masks. And in these uncertain times, um, we can connect with that joy deep within us, which is and has been the key to our survival. We've seen in the chats that we have all audiences tuning in from all over the world, which is so exciting. And today is a celebration. So we want to make sure we share this joy with the world. So invite your friends, your family, your coworkers, your children, your neighbors. As we go through the program, we want to hear from you. So use this chat to let us know how you're doing, how you're feeling. This is our community right here. But before we move any further, we want to ground ourselves and bless this space. We will now open the ceremony with a traditional tradition recognized throughout the African diaspora, our blessing. So our brother, Baba Amoyade Shabazz, will lead us in this blessing. Everything that God makes has power. Everything has a purpose, and everything that has a purpose has a place, and everything that has a place has power. So as we use those things of power, we can use those things to empower ourselves. So that's why we say, Bobo Wani Che, Bobo Wani Che, Ache Olo Dumare, Bobo Wani Che. Okay. Bobo wani she, Bobo wani she. Can you light that candle? Itana olodumare, 
Bobo one in shape. Bobo one in shape. Bobo one in shape. On me two two or do Bobo one in shape. Bobo one in shape. Bobo one in shape. Itana or do Bobo one in shape. Okay. So now we're going to begin the libation. We're going to speak in English as well as speak in the Yoruba language. The English, we're not going to have understanding. And with the Yoruba language, we're going to have the vibration and feeling of one of the African languages that is spoken on this continent, but originates from Nigeria, West Africa. Now, after I say each phrase, I like for everybody to say, Ashe. Okay, I'm just going to pour a little bit to begin with. And as many come to one, when the many come to one, when the many come to one, the one will work to many. The one to whom all they ruminate and they abominate, pay homage for whom they exist and know his laws and commands. Omi tutu. Mofika and kekere tutu si lekun mi. We put a few drops of cool water on our floor and on our plant. Bobo ari ile mi tutu. So everyone here will be cool and refresh. Okanwa tutu, put your hands on your hearts. So your hearts will be cool and refresh. Oriwa tutu, put your hand on your heads. So your heads will be cool and refresh. Tutu fua wa mom. Coolness for all the children that are here and that will come here and that are at our homes. Ati bobo tia wa sile mi. And everyone that comes, may they be cool and refresh. Omi tutu, cool water. Ile tutu, cool our house. Ona tutu, cool road. Tutu la roye, may a calm messenger precede our prayers. Tutu araye, may there be coolness to any kind of gossip or bad talk to what we're about to do. We give praise to our fathers that sit at the feet of God. We give praise to our mothers that sit at the feet of God. Help us to the, with this prayer that we're about to say. Hello, John. Come right, come right here. Hello, John. Hello, John. Ah, she let I get Ah, Ah, she. Oh, but it's a The owner of the day. Oba Lana. The owner of the close of the day. Oba Titi Lai Lai Lai. The owner of all days to come. Adake Dajo. The active but silent judge. Baba Tobi. Olorun Tobi. Baba Tobi. Iwa Orun. Iwa Orun. Ariwa Orun. Kusurun. We give praise to uh, the force, the one force in the east, the west, the north, and the south. Baba Elemi, the one who gave us our spirit. Alayamo, the one who gave us our purpose. Kikamashemi Obailumi, Kikamashemi Odorosimi, Kikamashemi Ranlade, Kikamashemi Obaraye, Kikamashemi Shulaibo. Kiko machemi oduke ye, kiko machemi sami flores, kiko machemi ade ushun, kiko machemi pasina palade, kiko machemi bobo aworo ati legum. We give praise to all the ones who helped us with this prayer that we're about to say. This is a tradition that was handed down, a legacy. This is not something that we made up. We're only carrying it on that we can come together as one. Let the many come to one. But the many come to one. When the many come to one, the one will work through many. The one to whom all they ruminate and abominate pay homage. For whom they exist and know his laws and commands. The originator and creator of all things created and yet to be created. The Lord of the worlds. The master of the dead judgment. Thee do we worship and thine aid we seek. 
We give praise to all those ancestors for whom we wear the mask. We give praise to all those who left behind children to carry on their traditions. All those who lived uh, a righteous life and showed us the way to go. All those who entered into the family circle, we give praise to them. This song was sung. It was sung during slavery. It was a song that was sung for those who are Ruagba. The, the elder slave was the one who made the way for us to do this. If they, the Ogbon Agba, the ones who voluntarily went into slavery to carry on this tradition in Cuba, they came over to us in the United States. Those who survived in Nigeria to carry on this that we came, that we are doing here in the United States. For every one of us that's living, many, many thousands died in order for us to do this. We give praise to all those who died in Africa whose names we do not know. Right. We give praise to all those who died in, in Asia whose names we do not know. Right. We give praise to all the righteous ones in Europe whose names we do not know. Right. We give praise to all those in North and South America who do righteous deeds whose names we do not know. Right. We give praise to all those in our family whose names we do not know. Right. We give praise to the ones who set a good example. We give praise to the nobles who protect the uh, integrity of the family. We give praise to all the healers in the family. We give praise to all those who are the talented ones in the family and who bring creativity in the family. We give praise to all of those who have businesses and help us to have sustenance in the family. And for you, we would not be. May we have long life. May we have prosperity. May we have companionship. We have children to carry on our traditions. May knowledge be spread. May wisdom be spread. May all of our sacrifices be accepted. Ashe, 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 Allah will learn all powers within God's hands. One candle can light another, but the one that lights it did not, does not lose its flame. One candle can light another, but it does not lose the size of its flame. So that's, that's our symbol. We should be able to inspire other people and not lose what we have. Give thanks, Baba Amoya Day. Give thanks for getting us started in our tradition. We appreciate you so much, Ashe. Ashe. Yes, now that the room is ready, the space is ready, all of our spaces are ready, thanks for that, uh, that, that blessing. Uh, let's introduce ourselves. My name, my name is Bruce Lemon. I'll be one of your MCs today, along with me, Tasha Hunter, excited to be your co-MC for today's festivities. Thank you all for joining us. So Bruce, uh, tell us a little something about yourself, your work, and why this day is so important to you. Well, I, I'm an artist in LA, and I have a history with this festival, and I love, love, love mask work. For, for a couple of years, though, through Watts Village Theater Company, where I'm the artistic director, we organized some mask making workshops in my neighborhood in an effort to connect our communities that are so spread out across Los Angeles. It was really a family affair, bringing my mom and sisters, niece, nephews together to get creative and honor our ancestors. I have some of the masks that the kids made last time they were here. Um, and uh, it's really, really just a, a blessing to be involved. I also had the pleasure of emceeing the festival live in the Merritt Park uh, a few years ago. So this feels a bit like coming home. When I'm not here, uh, with you, I'm telling a story either with Cornerstone Theater Company or even as the host of the community-driven storytelling series Unheard LA on KPCC. Natasha, your turn. 
Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you have going on. Yes, and Bruce, thank you. I remember that year that we co-hosted then. I think that was my first introduction to you, and I'm glad to have you back home. Um, I am Tasha Hunter, residing here in Long Beach, California. Been a part of this math festival for about 10 years. Been doing work in Lamert Park for about 25 years. And, you know, just love everything. Like you mentioned, family. This is a family affair. And we all step into this creatively, honoring our ancestors through art and, and, and the creation of masks. And over here in Long Beach, I'm helping to make some history. We are um, embarking upon creating an African-American cultural center of Long Beach, where I am the vice president of the organization. You'll be hearing some news because we're moving into a building in a few weeks. So um, without further ado, I want to say that um, we want to invite some very um, special people into the space right now. We thank you all for joining us. Um, people responsible for making this event possible to give a few words. So I want to bring up um, Karen Mack, the executive director of LA Commons, to provide the history of this 10th anniversary of the event. There she is, Miss Karen Mack. Let's get Karen's mic unmuted. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is uh, so incredible to have people from all over the world join together uh, to uh, create this energy that will move us into the future with joy, with, pos with positivity, and with sustainability, energy that we need more than ever. This is the energy we need right now. And this is why I founded LA Commons 20 years ago to really bring people together, recognizing that there is power in collectivity and um, art and culture is the uh, one of the most powerful vehicles to create that connection, to create those connections between people in Los Angeles, between people in our country, and as today, between people all over the globe. Um, I want to give you a little uh, background about how we got this, uh, uh, this amazing project started. Um, it's been 10 years, and 10 years ago, we were approached by a very amazing personage called Najite Agendotan. Najite is a master Nigerian drummer who actually not only performed throughout Nigeria, where he's from with his family, but also is a godson of the one of the most famous artivists, Fela, Fela Kuti, who we all look up to. Um, he was inspired by uh, the traditional Ugungun uh, rituals, which are really about using mass to create transformation. The mass, once the mass goes on, that is a reflection of the ancestors. And we know that this connection to the ancestors brings power, brings wisdom, brings the ability to learn from the past to move forward. And so he felt like Los Angeles could really benefit, the Los Angeles African-American community in particular, could really benefit from this transformative power of the mask. And so he uh, uh, re reached out to Ben Caldwell, who uh, if any of you are out there know Ben Caldwell, he is a master connector. And so, which is why, you know, our office is located in his space because, you know, the, all that connecting energy just like makes it happen like this festival. Um, so he brought us together and Najite um, asked us to support him in this endeavor. Um, and so incredibly after an all nighter writing a grant, 
to the Department of Cultural Affairs, which I have to give a shout out to because they've been our funder from the beginning. Um, we actually got our first funding for this festival and that's how it kicked off. And from this vision of this one person, we have today have this global community connected to the mass festival and so many people who you will hear from all throughout uh, today's celebration have been a part of the manifestation of this uh, this you know amazing amazing uh, coming together and uh, you know it's ten years and we look forward to many many more years of you know taking what we're learning from this virtual experience and bringing it together with the in real life experience and just moving it forward and forward so we can uh you know have this uh move forward successfully uh surviving and thriving into the future um now you are in for a treat because we actually have a performance from najite um he has these you know, what, what I love about Najite is he has not only taught us, but importantly, he's taught his family the ways of the Yoruba. And so he has his amazing sons with him to um, do a, a traditional performance, which I think will bring us deeper into the, the history and the, the leanings of this festival. Um, so with that, I want to bring on Najite Agendatan and the Olukun Cultural Group to do to perform Odere. <laughs> Thank you. 
founder of the famous Lemert Park Art Walk, a monthly happening that provides the perfect setting for our annual event. Yes, so the name Ben Caldwell is pretty much synonymous with Lemert Park and we're going to introduce Ben a little bit later on and he'll tell you why Lemert Park is so special. But before we bring Ben on, we have a very su special surprise for him. Um, as he is so near and dear to so many people and has touched the lives of so many people here um, and around the world, how to be unapologetically black mm -hmm. and how to do so with style and class and to value our stories. He's a Renaissance man at home and abroad and I've had the honor and pleasure of traveling the world with him. And, but particularly I remember back in the 90s, early 90s, him doing this, what we're doing here today, this Zoom style Facebook Live thing. I remember there was a huge screen in Chaos Network right there in Lamert Park in his studio. And we were talking to South Africa. My mind could not understand this. Like we are talking to them and they're talking to us through a TV. I can't so wrap my head around that happening in the 90s, wow. That then, and I saw it in the 90s, come to find out he was doing it in 84. So, and, and exactly, wow. <laughs> exactly. So this is Ben Caldwell, our Renaissance man. And um, I wanna say that we wanna take a special moment to also wish him a happy birthday. I know Ben is somewhere in here. I also know that his daughters and his grandchildren are somewhere in the chat, Elizabeth Caldwell and Dara Caldwell Ross and uh, son-in-law Ed, his grandchildren. And Ben's mother is in uh, New Mexico and they all say hi um, and wish him a happy birthday. Oh, let's flood the chat with happy birthday messages, everyone, whoever's in the chat and all, all your chats on the Facebook, on the live stream and the Zoom. Play with birthday messages to Ben. Yes, yes. And where is where is Ben? Ben is in the building. Okay, so we're gonna bring Ben to the forefront and he's gonna say a few words. Okay. You know what, while we wait for Ben to come up, we do have a um, special We Love Lamert business feature featuring, oh, 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 there he is. Happy birthday. Thank you, this is a wonderful surprise, you guys. I, um, I'm at a, I'm maturing and maturing and maturing. And it's watching, maturing is kind of fun as opposed to getting old. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you for you everything, guys, Ben. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot to everybody. It's good to get love. Yes. Yep, so Ben, tell us a little bit about this day. Okay, one of the things that I thought I would try to start doing is to really deal with how I really ended up staying here because I'm basically like Tasha said from New Mexico. Uh, so I came here to go to school at UCLA in the early 70s and I was fortunate enough to be engaged with this whole group of guys called the LA Rebellion. We started in the early 70s on this unapologetically black trend to really set up a template because black exploitation was going on at that time and we wanted to be different than all that. So at that time, I was fortunate enough to start working here in Lamert uh, uh, with Alonzo Davis and the Davis brothers and their mother and auntie. They were really a strong group of people, the Brockmans. Uh, I, they helped me do my first video class in this neighborhood in the early 70s. Uh, and then I also got to uh, uh, see the early formations of of the drum circle with Baba Olantunji in the mm -hmm. early 70s also. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward to when we started more recently, it was wonderful to see a same kind of Nigerian 
master drummers keep us in the mix with uh, with Naijipe. So I so that's how I started working with them. But let me also just kind of rewind a little bit and go into my early 70s. So the the first part of it was with me working with those filmmakers and then working with uh, Brockman Gallery. And then I went from Brockman Gallery to Howard University, which convinced me to come back to Los Angeles. And I came here at a very fortunate time because the Watts Towers needed a videography videographer. So I started working with them and I used this as my home base to start really drill downing on figuring out what the 11 to 25 year olds wanted. And I used the aesthetics of magic realism as my major conquering force for that, to go toward the future. And that stuff is now being called Afrofuturism, but I started it way back then. And it's something that me and my daughter are coning, or that we're calling it radical healing. It's a straight way for media to be used as a healing device. So we started with that in the early 70s, and I got to practice it in for real at, UC, at, at uh, Cal Arts where I got to work for 15 years with real powerful teachers. And I think the one that I remember the most was a, a class that we did that was called um, uh, Jazz Visualization, of which Project Glowed was a part of it in the sense the laboratory in the community. And out of that community came Ava DuVernay and this wonderful Tasha you see here. And also a whole lot of wonderful brothers, mainly men, that I got to work with that reminded me of being with a football team. Uh, and we were rough and ready and crazy like that. So it was kind of fun to kind of run with those guys and we've been running around with each other for, for now. So then uh, in the eighties, I started with hip hop. Um, and then we moved later uh, into Project Blood and Cal Arts and like teleconferencing and all of the things that I was telling you there. And then more recently, we started devoting most of our times with sitting up this, this, um, this Petri dish out in the front of the community here that's called the People Street. And that Petri dish gives us the capacity to test out all the cultural dynamics that happen in the community and to see if we could work as an artist within it and have, the, have something set up where science, technology, engineering, and math walks through the artistic door and uses artists as the lead because artists can do business like you can't believe and if you don't believe it look at the creative economy and when you think of black people who do you think of all the rich art entrepreneurs all around the world like the first one we think of of course is beyonce next jay-z then all the various sundries of people all the way back to when we first got free from lead belly you know, Lead Belly's music to now is the kind of creation of music that we've been able to deal with. And that's what Chaos Network's been playing around with. And this art block is a continuation of that because we make it thematically monthly to deal with stretching out with all our African culture and the diasporans and then to have that radiate throughout the month. So what we're planning on doing in the future is like Tasha said, we do teleconferencing. We've I've done it when the moment I opened this place in 1984, I had the fortunate circumstance to work with Kit and Sherry, who wanted to humanize the system that we're working with now. And so I think we're going to sit that into action out of what we've learned these last few days in the cattery that we've been able to put together in these last few months. And I think you'll see a, a whole nother spread of our monthly art walk that will end each month with these massive, wonderful, uh, mass festivals to show the anonymity of our ancestors to come down and visit us without scaring people because it's only the Europeans that get scared from meeting their ancestors. We love meeting them. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've never done anything sure. bad. So yes. that's it. Thank you guys for it. And I want to thank Naijite especially for bringing me down the road of opening the doors of, of activating the mass off the wall into our community. Thank you, brother a whole lot and and the sisters and all of the folks who have helped this like to keep the fire going like Shai Mawasi. It wouldn't happen without the sisters keeping it going. So I want to give that a super prop with Renee and Nzinga and also the sisters behind LA Commons that helps that work. 
All right, so that's it. I just want to thank everybody. It's been nothing but wonderful. And I want to do another 75 years of this. And we want you to thank you, Ben. And I want to give a special shout out to, you know, throughout the day of people that are coming to into the space. Um, Sister Janelle Price, who teaches our babies how to dance, and she rents out a chaos network. She's in the house. We have um, Najite in the house. Um, we have Brother Flag, Triple OG, and his wife in the house, and 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 B. Kali, a poet well-known poet in our community and abroad. So just want to take a moment to recognize some folks. And if we didn't say you right now, at some point we look to doing that throughout our time together. But we want to just pass this over. We're going into our We Love Lamert local business feature, number one featuring Chaos Network and Napoli Natural. And as we wait for that to queue up, don't forget to drop where you're from in our chat. And as you come into the room, uh, sometimes your, your, your video will pop up. We see some masks popping up, which is beautiful. Don't forget if you're in the Zoom room, uh, please turn off your video for now and keep your microphone muted. Uh, and we'll have a moment to, to check in with you later on in the broadcast. Local business feature powered by We Love Lemert. My name is Johan, and as part of this year's celebration for the Festival of Mass, we've decided to take an inside look at some of the businesses that make Lemert Park Village so special. Greetings, I'm Tony Jolly of Hot and Cool Cafe. Um, here at Hot and Cool Cafe, we do a little bit of everything. It's a community space um, that has turned into uh, a healthier food option with vegan nosh, specialty coffee, specialty teas juices we uh we provide services from five different vendors of people of color throughout the neighborhood it's just uh a, an accumulative of, of entrepreneurs here incubator of specialty goods hi uh i'm Sika Duompo, and um we sell all types of african uh, products uh, soap uh, shea butter and we get a lot of clothes from nigeria which they ship to us in different parts of the country. And I work here with my daughter, Milan. And I'm very thankful that she's here at this time. My name is Milan and we are here at Sika's. At Sika's we provide nose piercings, we sell African art, jewelry and sculpture, and we are a community center. So Tony, earlier you shared that you were originally from DC and coming to LA, you could have set up shop anywhere, but you decided to set up shop in Lamert. Tell us, why do you love Lamert Park? I fell in love with Lamert. I've noticed this is a place where people come in to tap into the blackness, to tap into togetherness, to tap into each other. Um, and it's a space that I'm familiar with, being from Washington, D.C., which was predominantly black at once. So Lamert Park today is probably one of the only neighborhoods of its kind in the country. Well, uh, uh, this is all about our dreams of doing is to live in a loft and have a gallery or a store of my own. I love Lamert Park because I grew up here and I got to see this through a child's lens. I got to see it go through its ups and downs and see what a place of community is. So many people love one another, so many people come through here and it's just an energy melting pot. Uh, so who are some ancestors that you honor with your work? You know, I got some ancestors, huh? Um, well, they're ancestors now. Um, Kobe Bryant, pretty much forever I watched him and his mentality, um, his work ethic, his willing to will to win. It's something I take on in my entrepreneurial life. Um, you know, Nipsey Hussle and what he, his entrepreneurial influence he brought closer to the people within the neighborhood, the people of the streets, to inspire them to want more, to eat healthy, and you know, you can still be yourself on an alkaline diet. And um, we're gonna go a little bit far back, further back to Harriet Tubman, 
and her whole willingness to put her life on the line for her people over and over and over again um, until she died was just phenomenal. So those are the great I would say Billy Higgins, who's a known jazz musician who was in uh, Lamert Park a lot. We play a lot of his music and other artists that he worked with and inspired. I would say Laura of Gallery Plus. She passed away within the last couple years and she sold a lot of really beautiful artwork. And then Richard of Fifth Street Dicks, he owned a really amazing coffee house during like Lamert Park's prime. And so we honor them by just speaking their names and by selling the same things and educating our community through art and music. What are some words of encouragement or uplifting words that you would want to share with the community? Um, especially within our black community, we, uh, we kind of know our value. Um, now that I think of it, we don't know our value. Um, so we really got to tap in and value ourselves and everything that we do, celebrate ourselves, and um, pretty much you know, live with love and patience with each other as we grow into our greatness and grow into our excellence. Well, I would like for you all, you know, uh, to start taking over some of these festivals and celebrations. You know, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm, um, Billy Higgins, our hero here in the neighborhood, Horace Taft Scott, who foregone his, his uh, career as a, as a great pianist to spend his time educating the young fellas in Watson Compton. I think right now it's really important that we recycle the black dollar because we can solve a lot of problems there and we can be reliant on us and no one else. We can educate our own and we can just have a real sense of community that way. Thank you for joining us for the local business features. I'm your host, Johan, and we hope that you all enjoy the rest of the festival. Peace. And once again, thank you for all that you do while you're unmuting. Pastor Sauls, thank you for all you do. Welcome. Good day, good day, beloved Sabona. Sabona. Lord, I'm feeling the joy, people. It is so uh, good to be with all of you. Um, I, I've been looking forward to this time just to celebrate black joy. Oh, my gosh. As resistance. And so uh, greetings, beloved global community. Uh, I am Pastor Calvin Sauls, born and raised in uh, South Johannesburg. I'm a faith-rooted community organizer in social and racial equity uh, here in South Los Angeles. And I am just grateful for the journey of resistance and reimagination called Black Joy. And so uh, it is just such a joy to be here. During these uh, perilous and tumultuous times, Today's invocation uh, is an invitation to celebration and provocation at the intersection of South Los Angeles and South Johannesburg. I saw we had somebody you know, here from Johannesburg, so glad that you, know, you are here joining us. You're joining us at the intersection, and that's great uh, that you are here you know, uh, with us. Today is a shown up day of joy as we acknowledge the bold and broad shoulders on which we stand and gather at the intersection um, uh, from yesterday uh, at the, or at the intersection with generations from yesterday, generations from today and generations yet to come. That's what I love about the, the, the intersection. It is always in anticipation of that which is to come. With Sankofa as our guide, we appreciate, celebrate, and participate in heritage. Our heritage, a global tapestry of beauty and diversity, joy, and the pursuit of inclusivity, equality, and equity. Today's uh, invocation is a provocation, provocation in resisting the ideology and the theology of white supremacy with black joy that is deeply connected with the depth and breadth of divine joy that exclaims all black lives matter. Yes, all black lives matter. All black lives matter from Kentucky to Kenosha to Cliptown, from Minneapolis to Miami to Mamalodi, 
from Evanston to Easterus to El Dorado Park, especially El Dorado Park, my hometown uh, on the south side of Johannesburg, where this past week uh, we saw the uh, killing of an unarmed 16 year old uh, young man, Nathaniel Julius. Yes, we have to say his name and lift up his name. Uh, he was challenged with Down syndrome and he went to the Don Matera School for Physically and Mentally Challenged Young People. This week, he lost him on day a cause of police brutality in my hometown. Yes, we are at the intersection of police brutality in South Los Angeles and in South Johannesburg. And so we say his name and we say hashtag for Nathaniel as I spend my morning uh, with the family and with community members from El Dorado Park uh, just to see how we can once again, you know, make sure that the joy that that policeman thought he was taken away from us is the joy that we can reclaim as we keep on keeping on. One of my favorite spirituals is ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking and marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let no hatred turn me around. Ain't gonna let no racism turn me around. Black joy, y'all. Ain't gonna let no injustice turn me around. Black joy, y'all. Ain't gonna let no white supremacy turn me around. Black joy, y'all. Ain't gonna let no bigotry turn me around. And while I'm at singing, I ain't singing, I'm kind of rapping here, y'all. There's another song that says, this joy that I have, the world can't, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away from me. Well, I'm gonna kind of do a little remix on that and say, this joy that I have, white supremacy didn't give it to me. And guess what? White supremacy took it away from me. So during these perilous and tumultuous times, that invites us to engage in courageous and audacious acts of resistance and reimagination at the intersection. We are glad to be here with all of you, our beloved global community. Now, let me say this. No one carries the joy of resistance more beautifully and more powerfully than our queen mothers. So, as part of our time together today of celebrating black joy as resistance. I say ashe and amen to the invocation, but I have to say next up are the female elders of the community. I am so blessed by them. Glad to know so many of them. Love their joy. Every time they come out and move, whether it's through drumming or just move through sacred movement, they just, touch my soul deeply and they blessed my spirit. So next up, our female elders of the community who are here to tell a story. The queen mothers represent the beauty, grace and artistry to which, <coughs> to which we all can look up to. They are accompanied by the master drummers who are the most accomplished master drummers in Los Angeles. This year's performance is called Mama, I Can Breathe, followed by Shine Mwasi and their piece, Say Her Name. So we are at the intersection. Let us continue to go to the next level in our resistance through joy. Amen. At the same time, all the corruption and justice, the same crimes, always 
Wow. We take this moment right now to thank our Queen Mothers and Shine Mawasi for those beautiful presentations. Presentations that give us an opportunity to acknowledge the lives of women whose lives were lost at the hand of violence, police violence. And reminding us the importance of our breath. So we're here due to the necessity to acknowledge and remember our ancestors. A tradition that should be a part of our lives, not just once a year, not just once a month, but every day. And many of us do this in so many ways. We've lost so many over the past few years, not just to violence or injustice, but simply because life is a cycle. And in acknowledging our ancestors, we take time to acknowledge them by pouring libations. Pouring libations is something we do, we use water or some sort of liquid, something that we consider uh, an energy that continues to flow, something that represents the natural continuous flow of life. When we pour libations, we pour libations either into onto the earth. If you have a plant, you can pour into a plant. I have a plant right here. Some people like to pour directly onto their altars. And we've seen all too well in music videos and movies where the homies, they pour one for the dead homie onto concrete. It's all valid because we are remembering our ancestors. Each and every one of us is the sum total of all of our ancestors. And within us, we have access to the collective experiences and knowledge of all of our ancestors. So right now, let's come together and let's pour libations to our ancestors. Whether you are acknowledging a grandmother or a grandfather, a great grandparent or a parent, it could be a sibling, it could be an aunt, uncle or a cousin a family friend, a mentor, or someone, just anyone that has touched your life in a way that you positively remember. You can move forward with the learnings, those lessons and experiences that that person has imparted to you. They are your ancestors. So I'm gonna ask our Zoom community to unmute yourselves. And if you're on Facebook, I'm gonna ask you to type the name of your ancestors into the chat. Those of you on the Zoom, in the Zoom community, you can also chat, type names into the chat as well. But I'm gonna ask you to join me in calling out the names of your ancestors. Mm. So after we each state the name of an ancestor, we're going to say Ashe. Ashe, it's like saying so we're empowering the energy of our ancestors. When we say Ashe, it's very similar to saying Amen. So I'm going to start us out with one of our ancestors, our new ancestors, who just left the physical plane with us just recently. Chadwick Boseman. We say Ashe. 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 Ashe.
Ashe. Morris, Vivian Singleton, Lewis Carter, Tom Benita, Dr. Subida, Carl Smith, Eddie Pegram, Eddie Pegram Jr., Mama Miriam, Mama Miriam, Cora James, Latoya Chandler, Professor Earl Grant. Dr. Isabella Abbott. Norman Smith. Joe Ashe. Any so. Florence Cap. Ashe. Dorothy Clark. Macedonia Cap. Ashe. Don Henry Lewis. Ashe. Diane Rodriguez, Johnson, Lee Robinson, Ashe, Clark, Ashe, 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 Allison Watson, Ashe, Barry Brown, Ivan, Ashe, Roy James, Ashe, 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 Anthony McLean, Ashe, So many I know you all are feeling that energy. So now what I want us to do, because we have collectively just called on all of our ancestors. We have brought them down into the mix. Shame. They are in this jump. Who paused her? I'm muted. Can we unmute right? You're muted. Okay. You're muted. You're I'm, on mute. I'm Can't hear. Okay. And as we each called out the names of our ancestors, as we each gave the ashe to each other's ancestors. We all empowered the ancestors that live within us. And I know you all feel it. So with this energy, we're going to do an exercise. We're going to do some Harambe pulls. Harambe is a Swahili word that means let's pull together. And with everything that our community has been facing these past few months, with everything that the world has been experiencing this past year, we all need to pull together. So when we do our Harambe pulls, we're gonna pull, we're gonna reach up to the sky, you're gonna reach up and grab all the energy from the universe and you're gonna pull it down into yourself. And we're gonna do this seven times each time reaching and grabbing more energy. And on the seventh time, we're gonna hold, we're gonna reach and grab as much energy as we possibly can. And we're gonna hold that Harambe together as long as we can. So with that, we shall begin. I'm gonna ask some of you to go ahead and share your videos so that those of you in the Zoom room, you can see each other, so that you can see each other. Go ahead and put your Zoom video on gallery view so that you can see each other as we're doing this because we're doing this together as a community and as one and I see all of you, yes. So we are ready. All right. So remember seven pulls, okay? And so we're reaching up. Harambe! 
Oh, but I can't hear you. So I need you to unmute yourselves because this is a collective, a collective <laughs> said before I can't breathe breathe in that energy and our theme is celebrating black joy we are celebrating that black joy so you take all of that energy and you hold it in your heart and hold it dear to you and as you go out in the world you take this energy with you and you shine this energy upon them that you come in contact with you are now an agent of black joy. You take this joy, share it with all them around you. And remember to feel this joy when you think of your ancestors. Ashe. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ranika. Thank you so much. Uh, Ranika is one of our Connecting Communities workshop leaders and a member of our Mass Festival Leadership Circle. Uh, uh, just a reminder, uh, everyone, if you're, if you're in the audience, thank you for turning on your video and, and, and unmuting for that moment. Uh, go ahead now and turn your video back off. Mute your audio. We'll have a moment to hear from you again later on. Uh, we want to extend a thank you to our elders, Ndinga Kamara and Mama Nene, along with our queen mothers, master drummers, and the Shiro drummers of Shine. We really value our elders in this community and, and this event, bringing their wisdom to guide us and laying the foundation for all of us to stand on together. They really brought their wisdom and, and, and guidance in these two works, speaking to black lives taken too soon, along with the lives of so many others, inspiring us and charging us to reactivate and re-energize this movement at this pivotal moment in our country's history. And we pay homage and respect to these ancestors. That is what today is all about. All those who have gone on before, but still have so much to give to the cause and helping us survive and thrive. Ashe. Black joy. 2020 has been has been a year, y'all. Well, so has the last couple centuries. So finding black joy uh, is important. It's necessary. It's it's what will power us through uh, these times and into the future. Will propel us to heights unknown. Now, the day of the Ancestors Festival of Masks has always, from the beginning, been an act of creative, joyful resistance an unapologetic display of blackness empowering all who participate to be fully themselves in the world. This is no small feat for black people. We have frequently paid with our lives for asserting our identity and even just for existing. But today is about transcending that as we have given ourselves permission to deeply connect with the power of our blackness through amazing creators in Los Angeles and across the world in a relentless pursuit of black joy which is what we are here to celebrate today. Next up, we're gonna see a video. We have a procession every year in the Murt Park, honoring our ancestors. And now you're gonna to get to see a piece of that procession right now.
And coming up next, we have Homie Time with Real L. Lamert. And now we pass it to Homie Time with Kai and Verbs. Hello, what's up? My name is Verbs from Homie Time and Verbs and... And Kaya, Kaya. hey, welcome everybody. <laughs> welcome yeah, to Homie we, Time with Verbs and Kaya. Yeah, we got a radio show on Double Live every second uh, Thursday of the month. And uh, we're here to talk about... Yeah, we're here to talk about why we love Lemur. Um, we're here to uplift and honor our ancestors. Again, I'm Kaya, I'm a cultural organizer with We Love Lemur. Um, and for those of you who don't know, We Love Lemert is a community of cultural organizers in the village that's um, intergenerational and just seeking to amplify the magnificence, magnificence of Lemert Park and, you know, tell everyone how amazing Lemert Park is. And Verbs, um, what ancestors would you like to uplift today? Uh, my grandma, Essie Lee Kelly, she used to live on 29th of Haldale. That's where I grew up as a little kid. And she supported the whole family and brought us from Texarkana, Texas back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I definitely also want to call my grandma into the space, Daisy Dantzler. Um, she it was someone who was just a really strong influence in my life. And so I always just carry her with me and try to make her proud with everything that I do. Um, and today we're also being joined by Sandria Wrights and Mel Hunter. Yeah, people What's going on? What's going hey, on? Hey, family. Hey, y'all. I'm, I'm happy to be with you guys, even virtually. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. going to join us today. Yes, so um, I am lifting up today Tony Morrison as my ancestor. Yes. Um, and I am, I love Lamert. Um, personally, Lamert was, I'm not from Los Angeles, so Lamert was where I found my people um, doing work that I was interested in. And um, Snatch Power actually formed in Lamert Park. We all met through Kyle and Bananas, all the original members of Snatch Power, Uhuru, the founder, Simi, Chelsea, me, T-Rex, we met at Bananas and that was in Lamert Park. And as soon as we formed, we space to, to um, hold workshops. Um, and that was through Ben. Ben taught us how to make money with our art. And yeah, yeah. I met, I met Mel. Oh, I met Mel there doing the crock pot yeah. with Sick Lavia. And we decided to get together and do some things. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Mel Hunter, and I wear a few hats. Um, but yeah, my connection do. to Lamarck Park is through the Juice Joint and the Crock-Pot, two live music events that I curate and produce. And my first Crock-Pot in Lamarck Park was July 27, 2014. I have not left that place since then. Uh, um, <laughs> it became a home for me. I'm from Alabama. So it became home for me and it became a place where I could tap into my cultural roots as a Black woman and as an African. Like, in here in America in ways that I had never been able to do so before. So I was really just drawn to the community. And it really helped me find my purpose or realize my purpose. I think I've been saying since I was a little girl, like, mama, I'm gonna change the world somehow. Mm -hmm. And I never knew how I was gonna do That's it. My right. career was in makeup and I'm like, how am I gonna change the world through makeup? But when I started the music events, it was to heal my people. And it was to create a platform for my people where we weren't judged by the harshness of LA. And it was to kind of create something with a soul and with purpose and with pure intention, like in the midst of LA. And when I did that crock pot in Lamarck Park and I saw kids, grandmas, aunties, uncles, like I just thought, I just, I cried. That, that's what I remember. Like my heart was so full, I just cried. And so after doing the crock pot for a few years in Lamarck, I'm in love with bananas. I'm in love with snatch pies. I'm like, we got to oh, hey. because we, we love the merch. That fell in love. So, <laughs> we came <laughs> together for one of the crock pots and just made it a whole We Love the Merch Festival because it wasn't just me. I wasn't the only person that found that place to never left. 
you know, so now we love Lamarck is just an extension of all of us who are in love with the culture and the spirit and the beauty of black people and that community. Like we know community is power. Yes, and I have never had access to such a strong sense of community like that outside of my own family. Mm -hmm. And everybody can sing really good too, so that's a plus. Well, we do like to, you know. <laughs> Y'all are all really. Talented. I mean, we gotta put the healers. We got that's a gift. Drumming, singing, the gift of music is the most mm -hmm. universal, powerful tool that we had, and that's why I don't sing or do music. But I knew that music was the way to heal and connect people. Mm. You know, like I've always known that, and so I appreciate Ben for allowing me to grow. Right. there in that space he just <laughs> opened up chaos network to us and we <laughs> happy birthday ben one more time yes ben happy birthday i love you so much i cannot thank you enough you are right. like i have another question for y'all so when you think about your love of lamert and when you reflect on that are there any <clears throat> that you want to share with folks that really exemplify why you love lamert so much and why it's so special to us um for me i think that being a, a black artist and a black and there's so many flavors of blackness that you can get at Lamert. Like whatever you need to hear your history through. If you need it through writing, you can go to Exelon Books. If you need it through rhythm, you can get it in the drum circle. And that to me is very special. And that means a lot to me. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mel, what about you? Even my first, the drum circle is a very powerful, it's like something about the African drum that ties to us spiritually in a way that I had never even been aware of. But I remember kind of being at the drum circle years ago and having some kind of, I just closed my eyes and I don't even know where I went, but when I came back, I was just in tears. Again, like I feel like I always cry when, I, when my heart gets so full and I don't know how to explain what's happening, but just having a place to connect with that part of me during the digital is jump life changing. Yeah. <laughs> it's life changing. And then having people in Lamar Park that I want to be a community leader and a builder and with everything that I'm trying to do having been there as a hands-on mentor because it's not easy <laughs> and i have cried in chaos network from being frustrated and say give up and wanting to quit but having a mentor like ben who has been building community for longer than i've been living <laughs> yeah big <laughs> yes. hope. thank god yeah we in the future <laughs> yes <laughs> we are <laughs> And um, it's just mold and it's like what we're giving us that opportunity then look at how many lives that we've been able to change and inspire and shift through our platforms just by having being kind of be that incubator to kind of let us get our ideas out and figure it out and teach us created, along the way to create those spaces too it's just like creek following in the work continuing the work is so we're so lucky and then it's like even the next people that are coming up like the way that now kaya is taking over for the festival it's like everything is okay. i met kaya at, at um chaos network too you know what i'm saying right. Come to literature class because ben allowed me to have my first workshop my literature workshop at chaos network and that's how i met kaya like uh, uh nope i'm not gonna yeah cry. it's everything is so full <laughs> circle it make us feel like we really making history and it's just such a special place that i just want to dedicate my life to and like oh, man. it's i don't know it's it's been impactful in my life i don't think my experience here in los angeles would have been the same or i would not enjoy it the way i do without lamert park right. i can 100 percent guarantee you that like my experience in Los Angeles would not have been the same without having Lamarck Park to be that escape, that outlet, that center of blackness and culture. Yes. Right. And what has the been magical the corner program so far? What I don't know what you're what? Oh, I was saying, what have been y'all's favorite parts of the program so far? In terms of oh, the mothers, oh, the queen mothers, honey dancing yeah. and because i was i was kind of down you know like just thinking about the lives that we've lost you know what i'm saying but i knew that when it started off with the images of george floyd you know what i'm saying that <laughs> the, we're about to bring back the joy. so i was excited for them to you know hype it back up and they did not and that was my favorite part for, so far <laughs> I actually enjoy calling on the ancestors and bringing down the energy. Like, 
I agree with that, and that's probably something that I need to do more often. I made a, I called in my dad, but I made an altar for him at home. But I realized, like, I don't, I think it's, I'm still grieving, so sometimes it's hard for me to even go over there. Mm-hmm. But this is just, it was a beautiful experience because I'm always thinking about them, and I do want to figure out ways to call them in and really talk to and connect with my ancestors more so I wouldn't even have this experience or be able to gain this knowledge if it wasn't for what we're doing right now you know like where else do I learn these things and learn how to tap into something that's so natural and a part of us that the world growing up black in America told us was wrong Mm -hmm. you know so Lamarck has been my place to kind of redefine who I am and what I am spiritually and that was a beautiful moment for me because I'm always one to kind of connect with my dad and my grandma and just ancestors that have inspired me I'm so emo I'm sorry y'all I'm a cat <laughs> nah nah man this is beautiful man thank you it's not about guys. <laughs> honoring them talking about our love for the community yeah and it's a very beautiful thing. I feel very blessed to be a part of this and like to be accepted in this community the way that I have been. Like it has really changed my life. And it's just, it's put me on the path to where I know what my purpose is. I do know that I can heal the world. And I know that I can do it through music and community and culture and arts and creativity. And it's the most revolutionary thing I think all of us can do. So just to be a part of something where everybody's so gifted like all of our brands are so different but we all like from the same tribe or something it's crazy That's right. That's hey, if you build it they will come that's what i like <laughs> yeah. about the whole thing yeah. yes well thank you so much everyone for joining us for this special segment of homie time with verbs and kaya um, yeah we're gonna continue uh with our program and we're gonna see some more We Love Lamert business spotlights. It's really important for us to, again, recycle Black dollars, invest in our community, love on each other, and, you know, make those personal investments and also invest our resources. So, yeah, yeah, like being said, yeah shop at Ride On Bikes with ID. <laughs> it's a home. Right on. Yes. <laughs> Wakanda forever. I know. For real. Oh. Forever. Yeah. God. Rest in peace, Chadwick, too. Yeah, man. I know that broke my heart, too. But I yeah. appreciate his. Welcome to the local business feature powered by We Love Lamert. My name is Johan, and as part of this year's celebration for the Festival of Mass, we've decided to take an inside look at some of the businesses that make Lamert Park Village so special. Hello, my name is Ben Caldwell. I am from Chaos Network, um, which is actually the three buildings on the, the east side of the Vision Theater on 43rd Place. I've been here since 1984. Um, and uh, what we do here is really future thinking, uh, especially with the use of media and all its ramifications and its ramifications in the future. Greetings, I'm Sharon Askia, and this is my husband Umar Askia, and we are Napoli Naturals. We are a holistic space um, where we want to bring healing into the community holistically. So we have the loose herbs and the teas, straight from the earth, um, you know, doing it as our ancestors did, no chemicals. Um, So we have internal holistic healing products and we also have products for external healing. So for the skin, uh, the body, the hair. Why do you love Lamert Park? I like Lamert Park. I love Lamert Park because it's so black. Mm. And that's enough for me. Look around you. Us, our culture, our people, the talent here. Um, everybody is just doing their thing. Everybody is just all love, it's peace, it's the vibe. Um, 
I just love Lamert, honestly. Yeah. I love Lamert. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Who are some ancestors that you say you honor in your work here? Well, the first one is Zora Neale Hurston. I love her to death. Uh, uh, written is a Rick Riyama, 2000 Seasons. Um, and um, I guess musically, I love all of my Glowed guys. I like a lot of Lemur Park, and I of course have Scott. Uh, artistically, um, people like John Otterbridge, and David Hammonds, Karen Marshall, all those kinds of guys are the folks that really impress me. Mark Bradford, this is Jenkins. I, I just love this place because it's so thick with black art. Definitely, you know, the most recent would be um, Dr. Seth. You know, he was a guy to let us know how we tap into our ancestors. We call, recall that knowledge of uh, healing our people. My grandmother. So um, that's where I you know, learned a lot um, from just watching her in the kitchen. You know, and then all of my ancestors that healed us along the way, you know. So we wanted to reclaim that back, reclaim that history, you know, that knowledge, which is running through all our, you know, our DNA. What are some words of encouragement that you would have or share with your community? I would say the main thing is don't be fearful. We have the game won. We just need to stay focused. We have to rethink the way we were taught to eat, you know, because a lot of the disease that we are um, dealing with comes from the food. Thank you for joining us for the local business features. I'm your host, Johan, and we hope that you all enjoy the rest of the festival. Peace. World and the resilience through these challenging ha challenges has been incredibly inspirational. But once again, it is our art and our culture that has always pulled us through. And with that, we're going to um, see a little procession. All right. Hello everyone, my name is Sean Baker. Right here I have my mask. 
Welcome, my name is Paradise Oakley. I'm one of the Sankofa leaders for the 2020 Mask Festival. <laughs> Hi, my name is V. I'm a Sankofa leader here for the Festival of Masks. What inspired my mask is um, I had a dream and an ancestor came to me in a dream. Uh, his name is Vandal and he had a jaguar prince like, outfit on, uh, thrown over his shoulder and a lot of red. So, uh, yeah, he said he was here to protect the children and women when the colonizers invaded Africa. So I just wanted to honor him. So I honor my my ancestors in the mass through having an elephant to represent one of my ancestors. We love elephants and we just pass away. And then I also have like sunflowers and greenery to so honor my ancestors. We to just into like gardening and um, things like that. Um, what my mask represents to me is the loss of my twin siblings. They were born at six months I believe when they died only after six days being born. And in honor of him, I'm going to watch him with my mask. The way I envision the future um, is similar to the, the ancestor Nanu that came to me in the dream, uh, protecting the women and children. Um, the world we live in is, is rough and I don't want my future children or my cousins, nieces, and nephews having to struggle with the same issues that you know, our generation and the ancestors before us had to go through. So making it safe for our children to be children again. So I envision the future um, with a lot of people having access to dictate how they live their lives um, and like what they have access to. And, yeah. Right, so we heard some from some folks that have been involved in the pro in the, in the festival. Uh, let's hear from everybody watching at home. Uh, what are your some of your favorite moments? If this is your first time at the Mass Festival, we definitely want to hear from you. And if you are one of our festival OGs, please tell us tell us what you feel, how this new experience uh, doing it all online has to go. It's bringing a lot of people together all at once, which is fantastic. We see here people are are, are grateful for the creative minds and the amazing mask out here. Oh, oh, I'm gonna read this one all out loud from uh, from Jenna 
Dider, uh, my favorite parts have been listening to and witnessing so many expressions of truth and strength, the Queen Mother's powerful dance and message, the shining bright energy of the libations and energy of the shared Harambis, and listening to up and coming leaders in the community discuss pathways to greater power and healing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ashe. Yes, yes. Here's another one from Baron Liner. Oh, as a native LA native, I'm so proud to have the organic expression of the African diaspora here. Uh, Dolores Chavez, loving the drums and the youth voices and the Queen Mothers. A lot of love for the Queen Mothers, y'all. Keep sending that love in. We'll keep reading these off. Uh, some more from Facebook. Johan says, I love the Mert Park, seeing the village from my living room in Arizona. I live in a very different environment from the beautiful black cultural community of Lamert Park in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, where I originated from, but I chose to move out of necessity. And my Estrella Mountain community is just a five hour ride away. So let's see you again soon. Soon, good people. Support black artists. Yes, yes, let's keep echoing that message. Support your black artists, support your black businesses, support each other, y'all. Yes. What else we got here? Fantastic program, lots of love for this. All the communities needed it. Beautiful dance and culture, energetic, loving mothers dancing. The mothers are getting a whole lot of love as they deserve. Keep keep giving that love forward, y'all. All right, y'all. Now this year, as in the past, uh, to, to honor the ancestors, community members work together to make masks, learn dances, chants, and drums and drum rhythms over the last two months, all from our own homes, to create this spectacle. And every year, it gets better and better. And we want to take a moment to acknowledge more of our amazing team. We have Beth Peterson from the LA Commons Community Art Project Director, along with artists Renika Pinkney, Maria Elena, Elena Cruz, Noni Alabisi, and Baron Leitner are workshop leaders for their leadership and tremendous generosity in sharing their talents with the community over the years and in person. This year, it's all via Zoom. How you feeling, Tasha? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. This day is beautiful. It's in, invigorating. And, and thank you for, you know, mentioning all the wonderful people that have been helping us through this whole celebration. And let's get to, let's get to, to get some, get, get a look at more of the people that have been involved in the process. We have another video, uh, video from our Sankofa leaders uh, coming up in the queue right next. Um, so uh, keep enjoying the show and keep I honor the ancestors with my mask by choosing colors that I see in nature all around me. Because I believe that we all are from nature and then we go back to nature. And so, yeah. I honor the ancestors with my mask through remembering all the great things that they inspired me and they led the way for me to be the artist that I am. Um, just a lot of things. How I envision the future is more communication with my family and friends and community, uh, being more candid uh, in that communication as far as being authentic and expressing myself truthfully and, uh, with pizzazz. <laughs> the future I envision for the world is one of what we get away from this color thing. I think color, you know, whether you're white, black, blue, yellow, whatever, has been the biggest trick to man because it separates us. And I don't think that we were meant to be separated. I think that we were meant to share ideas, share our culture, and just enjoy each other how we are rather than by the color of our skin. But I like what King said, by the content of your character. So I like that. And, and, now that I've gotten older, I realize that is so true. It's not the color, but it is the character. All right, y'all. Let's see your mask. And yes, yes, I am talking about your N95 or cloth mask, as well as all the masks that our community has made up into the lead up to today's festival. Here's a favorite of mine from festivals past, 
Uh, let's see what you all have created. If you have a mask you like to show, put your name in the chat. Yo, we love to see it. Who's next? Here we go. Where's B? Here we go. Where is C? Is C B's mask? Oh, look at that. Look at the gold. Look at the gold and the highlights. That is fantastic. The cloth. That is a big mask. Thank you. Fantastic work. Let's see Nicole. Now that, that is some craft right there. Look at the boxes on the eyes. Oh, I'm loving the gold. I'm really loving the gold. Oh my God. Look at the talent. Those are, these are beautiful. Beautiful mask. Yes. Let's see, uh, Amara and Clarence. Look at Amara and Clarence. Amara and Clarence. There. There they go. I yeah. see them. So many of our youth started off doing this as babies. Babies. Amara and Clarence are a couple of those babies. Now teenagers. Those are beautiful. I, Those are beautiful. Loving this mask and crown combination. Yes. yes. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Can we see Carolyn? Oh, look at Oh, that is beautiful. Yes, it, it is. I love I'm I'm loving the tree nose. I'm loving the tree nose. That's tree the first nose. thing that's, I saw. That's yes. it. Oh, and the the, the crown, the crown eyebrow? eyes, eyebrows, nice. Oh, yeah. That is some talent and some thought. Yes. Adonaya. Wow. Ooh. Wow. I love this oh, show man. and tell. This is show and tell. I love this. this is a two mm -hmm. a, a, a two mask or or yes. is it two pieces of one? It's like a two piece mask. Two piece mask. I'm loving it. That's yes, beautiful. see that that now this 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 is this is showing off. This is showing the I mask. Know. Fantastic, showing. Yeah. fantastic. How about verbs? Kyle verbs guy. I see you. Oh wait, no, I don't. Oh, coming up. Oh, we're getting a lot of love in the chat, y'all. We got nice, excellent, dope. Y'all so next? next. Who's next? Verbs. Who's next? All righty. Well, Imani. I saw Maria Elena Cruz in the chat. And the names, I'm hearing people say amazing creations. And oh, there we go. Oh, that is beautiful. Other, other, on. Can you can you give us a side view? Can you give us a side view? Give us a, give us a profile. Oh, yeah. God. with the glasses. See now, and Maria Elena is one of our art teachers through these workshops. Thank you for your contributions, and that is absolutely beautiful. Ooh, if, brown who, and a mask. Who be nice? Have we seen Jabari? Let's see. Bravo. Okay. All right. I know you got some mask at home, y'all. Uh, Sharon, uh, you know what you should do? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, with the tusk. And Brapo is one of our master drummers, son of Najite. I remember you when you were a young one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful work. Love, love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Do we have any? Do we have any more mask up there? We want to see. Uh, we, we we didn't get a chance to check out Verbs or or, or Imani or or Sylvia or Jabari actually. Are they out there? Sylvia Stinson has a master show. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. That's that is beautiful. Look at that. I I really love I really love when the mask are also crowns. Yes, and that third eye. Look at that. That is beautiful. So fitting. Calorie. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Imani's back in the back in the chat. Imani.
ancestors are speaking through our young people. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, with the glasses? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm loving the variation. We got crowns, we have masks, we have glasses, we have everything. All this creativity, mm. all this black creativity, gifted and talented people. So true, so true. I'm gonna read some more comments out here. The masks are beautiful, but our people are beautiful. Those smiles, black joy and effect. Oh, we got another piece here. Fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We got any more masks out there we want to we want to show off, y'all? Don't forget, we're not just talking about the, the mask festival mask. Remember, uh, it's still a pandemic out there, y'all. So remember to wear your mask when you go out in public, when you go out to public spaces, so you can protect yourself, so you can stay alive and thrive, and uh, continue to fill the world with your black joy, y'all. Thank you so, so much, y'all. Thank you so, so much. You know, in celebration of 10 years of the Day of Ancestors, 10 artists were engaged, five local and five international, most who have been involved in past festivals to engage with each other artistically and to discuss the role of creativity in moving us forward from these challenging times. Now, each conversation was incredibly inspiring, highlighting the commonality of experience for Black artists with amazing performances along the way. And we begin our tour of the African diaspora in the magical land of Salvador Bahia, Brazil. During the transatlantic slave trade, Brazil had ultimately the most captives of any country. And the impact of those beautiful black people on its culture and identity is profound as embodied in Vivian Caroline, scholar and leader of Banda Dida, the all woman's drum sensation. Watch the exchange with Lamert Park's own Mama Nene. And let me say, Mama Nene has just been a presence for as long as we can, can remember. And, you know, she is Lamert Park. She empowers. She just encourages. Those hugs are, you know, just empowering and, and just fuel us with so much. So, Mama Nene, thank you for all that you do and you continue to do and teaching us to pick up that drum and to let our vo voices be heard. We love you. We love you. So yes, now we're we going to that video. Yeah. expression is to be released so we call it wood shedding if you're not able to get out and be part of it that doesn't mean to stop <laughs> Fight on, create on it is prevalent that we continue because these are the weapons and our art will tell the story later on that's one thing i noticed about when i did go to brazil that art told a story every time it doesn't lie <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, um, Brazil, I had the honor and privilege of living in Salvador, Bahia, Brazil in the early 2000s and learned so much. Went to go study um, Capoeira, went to go study the language and so many profound things happened during that experience. Um, you could feel the presence of the ancestors and anyone that has been knows that Salvador entry point of so many of our African people onto that land was through Salvador. But there's a word that resonates with me when I think of it, it's saudade, right? And there's a term, eu tenho muito saudade de Brasil. Um, what does that mean? That means I, have a lot of saudade de Brazil. There's really no word that translate, but saudade is like an emotion. It is an emotion, an emotion of missing something oh. so much that there's a feeling. So when you take AO, it means I, Daniel, Daniel is yeah. I have, I have yeah. saudade. So yo tenho muito saudade de Brazil. Um, saudade? Saudade. Saudade. Yep. Portuguese is very nasally, so he'll tell you muito saudade, right? I should practice. You, you can yes. teach me. Yes, teach. it's a beautiful language, a beautiful um, people who recognize the ancestors on a daily basis. At the crossroads, you have Maida Santos, these godmothers, they look like our queen mothers, at every crossroad intercession, making something called a carajé. And a carajé is food of the gods, where People go during their day to eat a food of the gods. But anyway, I could talk about Brazil forever. Um, I want to say that um, also um, Viva Brazil, who's been doing samba in the streets, they're in the chat. So welcome Linda Udine into the chat and everyone who was a part of our um, Viva Brazil celebration, just seeing samba. They've been a part of our procession for so many years, right? So thank, give thanks for that dialogue um, in Brazil. Yes, thank okay, you so I'm much. Back to you. Yes. So next up, we're going to travel to South Africa, featuring two incredible poets, the late Zulu poet and UCLA professor Mazizi Kwene and Dr. Don Matera of Mosa Heritage, both fighters in the struggle to free South Africa. There's a lot of relevance to our current moment in this exchange. So listen close, y'all. Who would have thought that an empire would rise from a child that was prophesied? See it in the skies like the moon, watch the sun rise. On the dawning of a new day, of a new era, when Princess Nandi and her prince would soon get together. They say love's forever, but it wasn't and it isn't, and her heart was soon locked into a prison. Zulu princess that broke family tradition. Prince Senzanga corner locked in family divisions. What a tragedy from a long time ago When she asked to be his first wife He respectfully said no But in a womb a young Shaka would still grow And the secret that they kept the whole kingdom would soon know With two sons and a new one on the way And Kabaya told him the sun will destroy you one day There must be um, an intellectual um, a line that, that, that assists in understanding the perspective of where a community is going. This was the same uh, that we had in in, uh, in South Africa with the anti-apartheid movement. Um, all of the works of Professor Kunene and uh, um, uh, people like uh, Dr. Matera um, and, and, and many others who contributed um, were not just contributing because they were um, uh, poets or creatives, or they were uh, contributing to the spiritual and intellectual component 
uh, and pipeline that was so necessary to provide a backbone to where uh, the struggles and uh, apartheid uh, system, uh, where that was going. With the whole idea of one, you know, the African mosque that has always been about creating an image and and a, and, a, and a spirit that lives underneath. And today we mask ourselves against the imperfections that we ourselves have created as human beings. And so rightfully, uh, Don speaks about um, how this has driven us towards compassion. You know, we may not be together next to each other, but we can be together in our hearts and in our minds. And I think that's what this opportunity allows us. So um, technology on one hand can be our enemy, but we can also make it our friend, you know, yes. and that's what this has done for us. We have been here before the Khoisan, the Khoi Khoi people say, we have been here before. When the first sun rose, it found us, the Khoisan, awake and waiting. Long before others came to these hills, our footsteps shaped the landscape, tamed the buffalo and the hems bok. We rode the wind. We silenced the hurricane. Yes, look at us. We have been here before. We raised our temples on the shifting sands of Mali. We traded in the busy, buzzing byways of Timbuktu and on the cobbled lanes of Memphis, our camels passed through the needle's eye. We have been here before. That was amazing. Ooh. We have been here before. We have been here before. Mm. Powerful, powerful words, uh, especially about the significance of mask today. That ah, uh, I'm reeling from that last that last part of that segment, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Don, the world is here. You realize that the world is here. We y'all showed up with sure your mask is. and just the beauty and our answer and, and cross generational. Just amazing, absolutely amazing. Keep spreading love in the chat, y'all. We got another video uh, highlighting our Sankofa leaders. We love our leaders. And highlighting our community elders. Our community elders. What inspired your mask? My mask was inspired by my great grandma. I used to hear stories and look at pictures of her and this is how she looks inside of my mask. Hi, my name is Amaya McDuffie and I'm sharing about my ancestor um, mask and headpiece. Um, I wanted to use African print fabric because um, it represents my culture and um, Above all of my ancestors' faces are pieces of jewelry or beads, and above my Auntie Nikki's face is an angel wing to um, represent her in heaven. And I used clear gel medium to make the headpiece shine, and I also used mirror to make the headpiece shine um, to represent how bright they were in my life. Hello, my name is Kanye Duffy. who inspired me to make this mask was civil rights leaders, I believe, deserve appreciation. Right here, I have Nelson Mandela, John Lewis, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. The reason I chose these people was because they believe, they stood up for their beliefs and they stuck to it. How did your mask honor your ancestors? My, both my headpiece and my mask honor my ancestors because the eyes on my headpiece are supposed to symbolize my ancestors watching down on me and you know protecting me from above and my mask also symbolizes um you know because it has my grandma's lips so it also honors her in that way too 
Um, I try and honor my ancestors by being a good person and um, who they would have wanted me to be and learning from all that they have taught me. What I did to honor these ancestors were add adinger symbols, two to three adinger symbols on their face. And I added little symbols on the top of the head. For Martin Luther King, I added all the things he believed in. Justice, patience, loyalty, and freedom. On top of John Lewis's head, I mean, Malcolm X's head, um, I added a heart, because he had a love for the people. John Lewis added a flag, American flag with African colors. Showing that he was truly an African American. And I have some sunbeams all around Nelson Mandela's head because he was like a light, believed in peace, and he just drove for that. Lastly, how do you envision the future? Um, I envision myself to be happy, successful, and surrounded by the ones I love. Um, I'm hoping to be successful in the future and be proud of who I've become and I hope that God is proud of who I've become and that um, I will make a positive impact in people's lives. The future, I believe the future, is, it looks like it's going to change, you know, because we've gone through so much as people for us not to change. And the way I honor my ancestors is by just striving for peace and sticking to my beliefs. Thank you for listening. Uh, that that is beautiful, uh, especially the the mask with uh, with John Lewis. Uh, that that crown that got me. That got me. Moving on, y'all. Uh, Nigeria has the largest Black population in the world. It is the seventh most populous country overall. Arts and culture thrives there. And it was home of the most, one of the most famous artists, Fela Kuti. In 2013, there was a fantastic cultural exchange with Nigeria, the seat of the Yoruba culture at the heart of the Mass Festival and home country of Mass Festival founder, Najite. The dynamic Aduni of Aduni and Nefertiti arrived in Lamert Park as the perfect ambassador for the Day of the Ancestors. She was virtually paired this summer with the magnetic songstress, Jamita Rose. Coming up next, amazing artistry and observations from two Queens of Soul. Ooh, our sister Jamita Rose is just beautifully and beautiful and amazing. She's a Los Angeles native with a style like no other with inspirations of jazz and R&B. And you know what? She's been known to spit a verse or two. Mm -hmm. um, she and her group, Voices of Creation, are just um, absolutely amazing. She pulled some folks together, some singers, some folks that we know, um, including our very own Ranika Pinkney um, and a bunch of others to create Voices of Creation. And we love seeing them around Chaos Network. So we're gonna go right on over to our next Diaspora Dialogue.
for now, live for today. So that has taught, this pandemic has taught us that. And at the same time, the spirit of love appreciating one another, you know, something that will happen to somebody that you can't predict that this is the next person that this sickness will attack, that will take away from you. So it has given us a uh, uh, um, spirit of love, appreciating one another, and then um, bringing out the best from us. We never know what tomorrow brings, but usually we trust that tomorrow won't bring a pandemic. But a few months ago, tomorrow brought this experience. And so I think no one really knows what's going to uh, go forward. And it's um, an uncertainty in that. But I think resting in the fact that all potentiality exists, the potentiality for the systems to fail and fall and a need for them to be rebuilt. And we as creators and people must answer that call to rebuild these structures with love, integrity, and the concern for each and every one of us. Yes, yes. Let's keep it going, y'all. Uh, six years ago, Lamert Park welcomed the Amata and her bandmate, Royal from Quinta. We love learning about the ABC Islands, the Dutch Antilles, uh, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, where they're from, and the wonderful Black Roots music, Tembu, which was banned after causing a major uprising in Curacao and was a form of communication between each other. This provides the backbeat for the 21st century Tambutronica. Her conversation partner and producer in Lamert Park is, is Lamert Park's own Lita Fornia, an amazing musical presence who I've had a chance to share the stage with. Her diverse influences include Project Blowed in Lamert Park. Yes, I remember the year that um, they were in town and it was amazing just bringing that energy. It was so familiar. And I believe this shirt was from that year. Oh. Every year, the mass of LA Commons has done a shirt, and this one right here is Secret Music of the Middle Passage. Um, the beauty still resonates. Yes. Here we go. of history as my part uh, as the cultural what I would learn from because in this moment in time what really came to hand was like if many 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 years ago like in the time where where we were brought to Curacao or to Aruba or to other places we were unable or not allowed to make music we were not allowed to have parties. We were not allowed to do that kind of stuff. Which it was connected to a negative. It was connected to negative. So it was not allowed. It was forbidden. What you saw, the resilience of the fire inside of people's hearts for creativity, music, and the exuberance of letting go uh -huh. in order to continue. 
What they did is the same tools that were put into their hands to let go of their culture were the tools that they used to keep it going. It's making a lot of people like sit with their vulnerabilities and, and maybe try and be more vulnerable. So I would say to like, not be afraid to be more transparent about how you're feeling about things with your with with people that like you're around and you know like I guess yeah just like uh be more I guess to be more open to like I guess don't be afraid to talk more I think um would be I think is is also helpful because I think we have like more in common that we give ourselves credit for that we you know estimate so yeah That's fantastic, y'all. Next up, we have another video from our We Love Lamert Local Businesses uh, featuring Ride On Bike Co-op. Also, a shout out to DJ Ade for keeping us going. DJ Ade. And much love to Fernando Pullum Community Arts Center. Here we go with that Lamert Park Local Business feature. Powered by We Love Lamert. I am Mariah, and today we are going to show you some local businesses that make Lamert Park Village so special. Hi, my name is Ade. I'm the founder of Ride on Bike Shop in Lamert Park. Um, we have a full service bicycle shop and we repair and sell and bicycles. We've been here since uh, 2014, but in the brick and mortar since like 2016. My name is Fernando Paul, and we are at the Fernando Paul Community Arts Center. We were founded in 2012. We teach free performing arts classes to 850 kids. Those classes include drama, dance, film, recording, jazz band, uh, wind instruments, drums, uh, piano, guitar. That's what we do. What do you love about Lamert Park? What I love about Lamert Park is the arts and cultures aspects of it. The music, the vibrancy of Lamert Park. I, I love the energy of Lamert Park. I, I love that, that it's, it's a melting pot for different type of art forms, different personalities, uh, and, and it's safe. You know, you can come in here and just be reinvigorated on a Sunday afternoon especially. You know, if you can't walk out and you're feeling good about something, then, then you're not alive. What ancestors do you honor with your work? Man, there are so many ancestors that I honor in my work. I think um, ones that come to mind uh, specifically is uh, Major Masha Taylor, who was the first um, cyclist to integrate a major sport in the in the U.S. Um, so that's he's definitely part of the, the forefront, and also Fela Anikula Pokuti, who is on the shirt holding up a bicycle. You know, because I love the message and the work that he's been doing with his music. Uh, I honor Billy Higgins. Billy Higgins uh, was the most recorded jazz drama in history. So uh, yeah, I was driving down the street one day and I heard like the most offensive trombone playing that I ever heard in my life. So I had to pull over and see who was doing it. And there was a little kid, and the trombone was bigger than he was, sitting on the curb, beating on the, the sidewalk and the, on the parking meters was Billy really Higgins. And when you see a giant like that stepping down to help someone, it inspires you to want to do a lot more because I, I just felt like I was doing nothing. And so what I also want to do is inject, in, inject some youth into this area to be able to maintain the spirit of communities. What words would you like to offer to uplift the community at this time? All power to the people. Uh, I would 
would say, be it an active participant in your dreams. A lot of people have fantasies, they're going to be rich, they're going to be famous, they're going to do all these things. But when it comes to making those things happen, there's no action. You know, you have to, you know, like every day say, what did I do to become closer to what my, my dream is? Yeah, if you can't answer that in a positive way, you never make it. Thank you for tuning in to the Local Business Features. I am your host, Mariah, and don't forget to enjoy the Festival of Masks. business features are awesome. I, I have an old uh, Giamante road bike. I need to bring that to the bike shop. So I'm really glad I, I saw this today. So I know exactly where to take it. Uh, we're excited to get into introducing you to another local business. Uh, but first, let's tell you about Zambia, where the matriarch of this family endeavor is from. Located in Southern Africa, uh, Zambia is a landlocked country, but it's also the site of one of Earth's true natural wonders, Victoria Falls. But, in the, but the real wonder of the country are its beautiful people who have a reputation as one of the most harmonious populations in the world, despite being composed of 72 different tribes. In the 1970s, Francesca and Aloha moved from Zambia to LA and recently back to Zambia and has for more than 40 years been designing clothing to assert her African heritage and connect others to theirs. She and her beautiful daughters, Nyambo and Kay, now jointly run the international fashion brand Katula by Africana, which among other things designed the clothing for the Wakandans of Black Panther fame. Speaking of Black Panther, uh, let's have a moment of silence for the wonderful Chadwick Boseman, who sadly, as many of you are aware, passed away on this Friday. But remember, as he said in the film, in my culture, death is not the end. It's more of a stepping on point, stepping off point. He was an inspiration to everyone in all of his roles, but especially as Black Panther. Yes. He's an ancestor now. Let's take a look. Thank you. Now, let's get inspired by the Analoha family and their fashion brand, Katula by Africana. Something about the heart and the spirit of us as a Black people that we are not going to shortchange ourselves knowing that it's just for a dollar. You know, our artistry and our craftsmanship comes from our culture, and a lot of it comes from our struggle as well. Our people have gone, they die, but the spirit is eternal. That spirit is able to guide us. If we can just have some confidence and trust in the Lord and trust in our ancestors who left us, that they are there opening doors for us praying for us, bargaining with the Lord. Bless my children, help them here. We will always survive. We just need to have the confidence. With the confidence, we're able to make it. We are creative people through music, through art, through our own confidence, you know, not taking drugs. Because once we take drugs and all that, then we are completely wiped out. But as long as we have our senses, our culture, our confidence, know who we are, not to be told where this, go here and all that, talk to our children, talk to our elders, all incorporate all this. 
we will survive up to the end of the, the end. That's all I can share. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, everybody, um, I want to encourage you to uh, make sure you go back and, on, on, and view the, the videos of the workshops on Facebook. Uh, if you want to create a mask of your own, uh, you can continue to celebrate. Uh, we don't have to stop anytime soon, y'all. Don't have to stop anytime soon. All right. So we are about to um, witness a performance straight from Wesley, right? Is it time for Wesley? It's time for Wesley. Yes, since we Zambia. just saw that beautiful dialogue and heard that wonderful music, um, let's go straight to um, Wesley from Zambia. Hello, my name is Wezi, and I am with the Heart Sound Band here in Lusaka, Zambia. I am humbled to be part of the Festival of the Mask 2020. The next song we're about to sing is titled Nsiku. Nsiku, in many Eastern languages of Zambia, Nsiku means days. In this case, I'm talking about taking one day at a time. In the, in the song, I narrate situations such as owing money, being overwhelmed with a circumstance in life that makes you contemplate suicide. And I'm saying, whatever it is that you're going through, do not think, do not worry so much about what's coming ahead. Take one day at a time. You'll make it. Let's go hard sound. <laughs>
about right here from Anika in all capital letters so you know it was loud and true loud and true yep yes people have been active in that chat all day thank you for all the different areas that you're coming from miss phyllis you have been giving us some links and all kind of wonderful information um yes yes from all over oh and i, I see i see this shop to Shop, Shop Katula uh, website in here, uh, which means I am about to spend way too much money, uh, and I'm proud to very looking, very much looking forward to it. I want to send a special shout out to Teron Moore for running the show backstage, running the tech, making this happen. I know this is a very, very different experience. Special shout out to the Calling Up Justice team and the LA Commons team for putting all this work in. Um, yes. we, 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 we will be back together in the same space once again uh, soon enough. But until then, we have all these different tools to lean into, all these ways to connect, all these ways to celebrate, all these ways to call up our ancestors all together and connect from across across oceans all over the world. We can all do it. over the world, yes. We can do it. These these bridges are, are connecting us, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have another performance, y'all, from a group from you've heard so much about so far. You've heard about Jamita Rose and the Voices of Creation. And now we have a performance coming up, y'all. And one of those songs, they are honoring one of our um, Lamert Park brothers, Ross G, um, who is now on the ancestor realm as well. And so we thank you, Voices of Creation. And one more time, I want to say thank you to Taran Moore for all that you do and your way with words and, and getting it done. Oh, yes. Yes. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. All right. Voices of Creation. But we never lose, we gain ancestors, and so the spiritual realm is buzzing. John Coltrane, they 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 reunited. It's all good. It's all good because we have breath and we can continue. We know he was here and we will continue to breathe and make manifest. This is a resigned Roland Kirk one. Spirits up above, but I flipped it. I hope y'all like it. Hey. 
I was in that spirit. I oh, yes. That spirit. Yes. That was beautiful voices of creation. I don't know if we'll see the other piece, but, and though we could not see that visual, I know everyone here with us today could feel exactly where voices of creation were coming from. Mm -hmm. I sure did. I sure I'm so did. Mad. I'm in here dancing. As soon as we get off, I'm gonna go back and find it. Replay some of these songs and stay in this mode all day long. I want to be in this mode all day long. Yes. It's been an amazing day. Amazing mm -hmm. day. We really want to thank each and every one of you for being present today and for the last 10 years. Um, we will see you again in Lamert Park next year at the 2021 Day of the Ancestors Festival of Mask. Tasha, do you got any last words for us? You know what? We just have so many. I can't. I know we've been doing a lot of thanking, but that just shows our appreciation. All the amazing people that have just helped. You know, and again, happy birthday to Brother Ben Caldwell. Yes, yes. You know, um, thank you for all you've given us for all these years. And to Brother Najite. Najite, look at this. Ten years in. Thank you for what you give and your passion. And, you know, teaching so many of us, all of our leaders. And Bruce, I can't even thank you enough. You know, thank you to Claudia and her team. Just all of our leaders, Pastor Sauls. Um, 
Baba Moya Day for blessing us. You know, I can keep on talking, Bruce. I, I, well, what, I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, coveting that that mask festival shirt you got on right now. I have, I got mine in here from a couple years back, uh, and uh, I, I, I want some more. I really love that shirt. I really love, I love the spirit of it. I love the spirit of what we're doing today. I love everything we're doing, and I'm so glad that we are uh, together in this moment. We really need to be, really need to be in this relentless pursuit of black joy, uh, and keep fighting. Black joy. That's what it's about, black joy. We are resilient mm -hmm. and we smile and we shine. We continue to shine. <laughs> Thank you.